How often will I upload videos on this channel? Probably like once every one or two weeks until to September where you'll be lucky to see like one video every month. Until November 6th where you'll see about like two or three videos every week. Probably even more depending on how busy I am. I mean, I did say I didn't promise, so, you know, you can't really get mad at me for that. I mean, at least you got to see a painting of a quick brown fox jumping over a dog, am I right? <laughs> So guys, I've been gone for a while. I mean, it's typical of me to take breaks on uploading videos. Not the first time this has happened. Oh, not the first time at all. But this time I have an actual legit reason, unlike all of these breaks. I'll give you three letters. HSC. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I'll be happy to explain it to you. Be my guest. So the HSC is basically the final exam that you have to do in high school in New South Wales that basically determines the outcome of your life. It is basically the VCE, the TCE, the SACE, WCE, QCE, and all of you states whose final exam ends with CE, but harder. So everything you developed your butt to learn since 12 years ago, you get tested on. And if you fail that test, no university. And if you don't get into university, you have no job. And if you have no job, you have no money. And if you have no money, you have no family. And if you have no family, you have no happiness. And if you have no happiness, you get depressed and you suicide. So basically, if you fail that test, you die! Actually, that's not true at all. No one actually cares how well you do in the HSC. Like, literally, you could just drop out in year 10 and be successful in life. But you know, since I'm an ambitious guy and because it's such a big deal all across the state as well, as you can imagine, I took that pretty seriously. And so I had to focus on it and hence no videos. There's actually more to the story than that. I've made a video explaining it on my second channel. It's pretty long, but I'm not allowed to explain it here. So go watch it if you want to hear the full story. But anyways, as you guys have read from the title of this video, I finally, 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 after so damn long, at least it felt really long, finished high school. Oh my god. So I'm gonna have the most time in the world to do YouTube right now. Except I don't. I now have to work, which actually takes up more time than I did at for school. So that's why this video was three weeks late. Wait, what? Three weeks late? What's going What the heck? But at least all those days of starting for things that I don't even want to understand, nor am I going to use in real life anyways, you know, worrying about exams, getting shouted at because you don't understand the content, going tutoring, freaking out, and sitting in the library by yourself because you have no friends are over. Now I have all the freedom I want in the world for three months at least. Then in February, I'm going to enter university and that's probably going to be more of a crap storm. Oh no, why did I say that? So anyways, in this video, I just want to talk to you about what I've been through for the past six years, especially that last year. Oh boy, has this year been interesting. Oh. So for the past six years, I went to a school in Sydney called Sydney Technical High School. This place, man, is where I grew up. Six years. Six freaking years. From year seven until year 12. From when I was 11 until I was 17. This place, man. As you can see from the intent of this video, I'm actually wearing my school jersey. As you can see, I have my name printed back here, and like I have like a you know, nickname at the back that like everyone kind of just meme. But uh, we're allowed to wear this in the final year of our high school, where all the other kids had to wear the uncomfortable blazers. Gosh, we were lucky. I have just normal clothes underneath, by the way. This is just a normal T-shirt. Uh, we weren't actually allowed to do that at school. We actually had to wear like a school white shirt and like a tie as well. So now my school is a selective high school, which basically means that I have to have scored a certain academic score in order to get into that school. And that test is done in year six. So the year before we actually get into high school. And the purpose of this was to separate the bright kids from the uh, slightly less bright kids. Just so that the bright kids could interact with the other bright kids, which makes it so that the bright kids could become even brighter as the environment is full of people who are also bright which allows them to do better in school. I feel like I've said the word bright a little bit 
too much, huh? Different selective schools will have different minimum scores. So like James Roos, pretty much the state's best school for like 40 years straight, requires you to have scored about 255 for your selective test. And then Bonnie Rig High School, which you can barely call a selective high school, only requires you to have scored about 160 for your selective test. Our school is around middle of the park and requires you to have scored about 200 in order to get in. Other schools have different scores and as you can see, our school squeezes right just in the middle. So basically what I'm trying to say is that our school is around the mid-range of the best schools in New South Wales. Which you can say is pretty good. So I did the test on the 13th of March 2014, I still remember the exact date, and I got a score of 207.22, which is actually enough to go to Northern Beaches Secondary College Manly Campus, jeez that was a mouthful, where it is of close proximity of one of my greatest idols, I think you know who it is, but you know it was a bit of a trek from where I live, and also I didn't even put down as one of my preferences, so I can't even go there, so I stuck with tech. That's a short name for our school, by the way. Tech Pride! So I started going there in 2015, starting in year seven. And in the first and second years of high school, the school picks the every subject for you, which included English, maths, science, technology, art, history, which you had to do for one half of the year, a geography, which you had to do for the other half of the year, languages, PE, and music. For languages, we did German the first half of the year and French for the second half. We didn't really have a choice, but those are some nice languages. I like both of the cultures, you know, especially German since I was a huge BMW fan back then. Um, I, I still am, but back then, just look at this video. And for all of these subjects, everyone in our class is also in the same class as you for all the other subjects, since all of us does the same subjects anyway. So because of that, we pretty much only made friends that were in our class, creating things we like to call friend circles. And then came year eight in 2016, which we had the same subjects, except the only difference was that you were allowed to pick which language you wanted to do. Unfortunately, that wasn't even an option because we only had one French and one German teacher and they were the same person and she freaking retired in 2016. So we were forced to do Japanese the following year, which I didn't really like as much, but I um, actually ended up doing it for like three years straight. Everyone in your class is still in the same class as you for all of your other subjects. So the people we were around with were still the same, except different people since they switch up the students. Year nine is next, 2017, and finally we were able to pick some subjects. So some subjects from year seven and eight still stay, namely English, maths, history, geography, science, and PE. Wait, what the hell, PE? The most useless subject stays, but technology goes. What the heck? So the subjects we can pick, I mean, there's all that. And uh, I really didn't have an idea of how important picking subjects were. So I just picked the ones that sounded great. Drama, Japanese, and graphics. Oh my God, now looking back at those selections, that makes me cringe. Luckily for me, well, I say luckily for me, but I actually saw it as a negative thing back then. There wasn't enough people to make a graphics class. I never thought I'd use those two words together. So I was selected to do IST as that was really similar to graphics. Unfortunately, the subject where I don't really get to use in life unless I'm going to Japan, which I don't get to do often anyway. And even though I do, there's Google Translate. And the subject where you get slapped around and punched all the time, regardless of whether it's a drama or not, did have enough people to make a class barely with 27 and 12 people doing it respectively. I think the minimum is like 10. So for the next two years, that was what I had to deal with. Ouch. Also, you could technically pick the level of math you want to do as well. But since we're in a selective high school and the school expects you to do really well, we didn't even have a choice. We had to do advanced. And also because of these electives, different people had different combinations of subjects. So the rule that everyone is in the same class for all subjects is now changed. So there was no such thing as friend circles anymore. We just made friends with everyone. Then came year 10 in 2018. Once again, same subject with no exceptions this time. You're actually allowed to change your electives, but for God knows what reason I didn't. God damn it, Oscar, you've done it again. Apart from my personal life kind of taking a derailing that dropped my grades down a little bit, year 10 wasn't really that interesting school-wise, so let's just move on to year 11 in 2019, 
which is where we start preparing for the HSC exam. Actually, we technically already started preparing it since year one, but this is just a point where we start worrying about the HSC exam itself. And what ATAR, otherwise known as the Australian Tertiary Emission Rank, otherwise known as the number between zero and 100 that basically determines the outcome of your life, we're gonna get. So, at this time, we get to select every single one of our subjects this time. Democracy, am I right? Freedom of choice. Uh, actually, except for English. Yeah, mate, they forced you to do English 13 years in a row. Yeah. I don't know. So these were the subjects we were allowed to pick, and we had to pick six subjects in year 11, and the subjects that I picked were English, Maths, Physics, Business Studies, Software Design and Development, and Photography, which were all great subjects, and I probably would have picked the exact same subjects today as well, so no problems there. Except there was! Unfortunately, business studies and software design and development were on the same lines, so that created a clash. So I had to drop one of them and I had to pick up either engineering, biology, modern history, or legal studies. Story was a bit longer than that, that was just the basics of it. Out of the ones I had to select to drop, I chose business studies as I wanted at least one computer-based subject because well, I'm a freaking geek, what do you expect? And I picked up engineering since my dad works as an engineer. You know, if your family does something, you should follow suit. So these were my subjects and you can actually pick what level of math and English you want to do since those were primary subjects. So let me bring in an old friend of mine explaining the levels of maths you can do and what each of them were for. Introducing OS First Timer in 2009! Ha! <laughs> I tricked you there, didn't I? Did you really think he was going to make a guest appearance? We do math standard, which is the lowest, math intermediate, then math advanced, which is for all those, um, you know, really smart Asian people and stuff who are always top of the class. What Phil said was that you were able to choose math standard, math intermediate, and math advanced, depending on how good you were at maths. The year 11 version of Matt and Intermediate was actually Matt Standard 2, just to create more confusion. And Matt Standard was known as Matt Standard 1. I mean. And there was Matt Advanced, which, quote, was for all those smart Asian people and stuff who are always top of the class. So, um, uh,. Yeah, that includes me. And I've also done quite a lot of top of the class stuff, such as memorizing pi to 480 digits and playing around with Excel sheets as a hobby every now and then. Now, based on that description, can you guess which level of maths I did? Standard 1, Standard 2, or Advanced? Leave your answer in the comment section below now. And uh, if you get it correct, you get a heart, and the first one to get it correct also gets pinned. No cheating or skipping in the final video, okay? So yeah. Pause the video, leave your answer in the comment section below. I'll reveal the answer in three, two, one, boom! It was none of the above. I did the level of math that was harder than the hardest level of math. Extension. Did you get it right? Did you get it right? Knowledge. So yeah. Sorry guys, that was a bit of an arrogant thing to do just then, but uh, yeah. I chose maths extension, which counted as a subject and a half. Photography counted as only half a subject, so I need an extension maths in order for it to be able to tank up to six subjects. Also, 80% of my whole school did extension maths, and the rest all did advanced. Our school didn't even offer standard maths, neither one of them, since no one ever does them in a school my level anyways. So for English, there was also the same thing of picking which level of English you want to do, except there's no standard two, just standard. There's also a level of English offered to those who has English as a second language, which included me, but I wasn't really eligible since I migrated here when I was only five. And there's also English studies, which was a joke. Pretty much no one in the entire state picked it, even the ones who are horrible at English. Like over 50 times more people picked standard or advanced, and the minimum ATAR of a guy who did it was only 84.35. I bet that guy thinks he's a king right now. Even though if you get an 84.35 out of school, you're pretty much disgraced. They don't even recognize you as an ex-student. Anyways, I wanted to pick standard since I actually kind of suck at English. But our school, once again, just like maths, didn't offer it. So, um, I picked advanced. And hell no, I'm gonna do extension English. Ugh. So yeah, basically to recap, those were the 12 subjects I picked all the way to year 12 
which actually started in October 2019 instead of 2020. In year 12, we were allowed to drop some of the subjects we did, either at the beginning of the year or anytime during year 12. Whenever we want to drop it, we could. Photography actually had to be dropped since there was no HSC course for it. It was just there to just fill in all of your subjects since it was only counted as half a subject. I also wanted to drop engineering since I was underperforming in it and also because I didn't even pick it. However, I needed a fail safe just in case I underperformed even worse in my other subjects, so I didn't drop it yet. Since I was doing extension mats, there was also an option where I could drop down to doing advanced mats or even standard mats, but then again, our school didn't even offer that if we find extension mats a bit too challenging. Now, in October 2019, my master's mats have started to fall all the way to a point where I only got like 50% for my last extension mats test in year 11. So can you guess what I did? Did I drop down to advanced mats or did I stay with extension or did I drop mats altogether? Leave your, you know what? I'm not even gonna do that again. It was none of the above. I went up to extension two mats, the level of mats harder than extension mats, which now to differentiate it from extension two, pun intended, is now called extension one. So yeah. I guess from this video, you can tell that I'm a math psycho. We also had the option to drop down to standard English, which I wanted to do, but not enough people from our school wanted to do that. So not enough people to make a class. And you know, since English was compulsory, I can't just get rid of it. But otherwise, I continued doing all of these subjects until I dropped engineering late February 2020, since it was by far my worst subject. And also since doing five subjects, one of them being extension to math, was just too stressful. And that causes me to do worse in all of my other subjects as well. So I just dropped it. And I immediately noticed I was a bit more productive than usual as I had less things to worry about. And also because now I get to attend the so-called study period since I have a gap in my school timetable now where I could just study for my other subjects instead of doing engineering stuff. And then some random small organism named after a certain brand of beer canceled school. I'm sure you guys could all relate. So I'm not gonna go into the details there. So now I'm trapped at home and productivity dropped back down again. We didn't even have any online classes. We only had Google Classroom where the teacher just gave us material to read over and study on. Which, as you can imagine, was not that effective. We technically did get assigned actual work for physics, but here's the problem. I didn't even join the physics Google Classroom since the code was sent to my email address that I never read. I only found out about it when I went back to school in May and then one of my mates were like, why weren't you in the physics Google Classroom? And I was like, what the heck, there was one? So at that point, I pretty much just spent time at home watching YouTube Disney movies. Since I had Disney Plus, why not? I also got back into making YouTube videos again. Since I was so bored, I literally just restarted my progress. Horrible timing. And I didn't do too much study. Well, sometimes I did, but that normally just procrastinates away. So in May, when the organism had pretty much faded out in my area and we were allowed to return to school once again, I was falling behind, especially in physics. In fact, my grades for physics was pretty much ruined just because I didn't join that one Google classroom. And whenever I tried to study to get those grades back, I just decide to slip away and do other things like looking at pictures of ports. What did you expect me to type in there, you dirty minded freak? You know, sometimes I can't even control myself. Sometimes I just try to like turn off my computer screen or make sure that my hand was always on the pen, but then I just fall asleep. Literally, when I try to study, my body just does something in order to try to prevent it. So as you can imagine, that made things really hard as I was always trying to make some time to study, giving up my time doing other useful things. But in the end, I don't even want to do it. So if I just played video games instead or recorded some videos, my time would have been through better use. So this weird study pattern, which actually started developing ever since I was in year eight in 2016, thanks puberty. And this whole time constantly being wasted thing continued through June when I turned 17 and restarted the Mighty Go 73 channel. July when I had a two week break that wasn't really helpful. August when I had my trials, the biggest and final exam that counted towards our internal grades for HSC. September when I graduated and October when the start of the big daddy of every single exam we had the HSC 
started. At that time, based on the exams we have done in our school all throughout year 12, I was ranked 115th out of 157 people, which equates to about an 89 ATAR, according to my teacher, which was great for me, since the course I want to get into only required a 93 ATAR, but has been dropped down to 91 because of the so-called organism. Hence, the university is expecting everyone to do worse, and also because internal students can't come. And I could easily get two more bonus points from extension 1, and two mats, five if I perform really well in them, and probably one or two more since my mother receives job seeker payments due to her losing her jobs thanks to that organism. So since all this meant that I can technically get into my course with an 84 ATAR, remember what I said about an 84 ATAR early in the video, I didn't worry too much. I still tried to study, but you know, not that effective. So after 13 years of my life in school leading up to this very moment, the HSC exams commence. So my first HSC exam was English, then English again since English was so important, the exams were so big, it needed to be split in two. Then came extension 2 mathematics, and then extension 1, followed by software design and development, and then finally physics. And on the 6th of November 2020, at 12.35pm, I was done. No more schools, no more exams. Freedom! Which leads us to now, where I'm done with everything, and now I'm just waiting to see how well I did on these exams. Maybe that will be a whole video on its own. But for now, I'm gonna end this video here. That was pretty much my entire school story that I know wasn't really that interesting. I pretty much just talked to the camera about this really hard part of my life called school. But I just wanted to talk to you guys about this since I finally completed my struggles, and you know, I want to just get everything off my chest. You know, just a video since, you know, I'm relieved now. And until of course uni is gonna hit me in the head like a freaking bullet again so hope you guys have enjoyed this video and if you have make sure to hit the like button let's see if we get uh eight likes of course subscribe to the channel if you haven't already thank you so much for 350 subscribers by the way let's go for 400 soon and uh yeah that's all for the video and i'll see you guys all in the next one goodbye